In the men's 3,000 meters, 7.39 to the world record held by Emil Putemans of Belgium. Steve Scott holds the American mark, 7.39.93, set one year ago. Here's the way they'll line up. Doug Padilla, the American outdoor 3,000 meter record holder, wearing number one. Next to him, Brian Abshire, fourth performer all time in the world, second American. Brian Deemer will be in lane three, representing Athletics West. Mark Junkerman out of UCLA will be next to him. Then Brian Grosso, 18 years old, an Arizona freshman. Aaron Ramirez, 25 years old, a graduate of the University of Arizona. 22 year old Harry Green, Wes Ashford, Dan Aldridge, all of 33 years of age, and Matt Giusto will fill out the field. There's a look at Brian Abshire. Second all-time American at this distance. And a steeplechaser. Padilla basically a flat distance runner. But Avshire and Deemer both have steeplechase credentials, and I always like to see steeplers run. They are strong. Brian Deemer, that bronze medalist in 84, just beating Henry Marsh at the tape. Avshire had a magnificent night in New York one time where he came out really, no one knew he was in great shape, and he ran the fourth fastest. 3,000 of all time. He'd need another night like that to beat Doug Padilla, I think. There's Mark Yuckerman, who had a great battle in the NCAAs a couple of years ago. You and I watched here on ESPN, Marty, as Yuckerman went at it with Joe Falcone from the University of Arkansas. He continues to improve. For Yuckerman to, to do something spectacular tonight, he's going to have to get to the front and lead a little bit of this race, try and hope that guys like Padilla and Abshire are not real hungry, not in real good shape, and let him go, let him escape off of the front. I don't know, though. Doug Padilla ran a mile, a road mile, a couple weeks ago, and he had a pretty good kick. He was in pretty good shape there. This stands up as a really intriguing race tactically. A lot of speed in this field. It'll be interesting to see who they let take the pace out as you see some surgery being performed on our track here at the sports arena. Deemer, by the way, was voted the distance runner of the year last year by the Athletics Congress of the United States. 88 and 89 national steeplechase champion. There is Brian Deemer, winner of the Glenn Cunningham Award as the outstanding men's distance runner of the year. Let me clear up something. Before we went to commercial, I may have created the impression that Lavonna Martin won the women's 50-meter hurdles. It was, in fact, Linda Tolbert over Lavonna Martin. And quickly, number eight, Wes Ashford, 28 years old, out of BYU, takes the early lead. Behind him, the Nike teammates, Doug Padilla and Brian Abshire. Ashford. This is a long race to run indoors. 20 laps of this track. It's 11 laps to the mile. So it's 20 and a half laps for 3,000 meters. 3,000 meters, just 200, well, actually 188 yards short of two miles. It's a nice distance. It's a good competitive distance. It's not like the mile where these days you feel like you're sprinting the whole way. There's a few laps in there where you can relax and kind of look around and feel people out tactically. And you can make two or three moves during a race and maybe not win it. Where in the mile these days you make one move and you either win it or you lose it most times. Perhaps even as important as the distance is the fact that there are 41 turns in this race. And running the turns is a skill that any accomplished indoor runner has to learn. Well, especially in a race like this, if you're uncomfortable on the turns, and the turns here are banked, which means that the foot plan is different, it throws your balance off. If you're uncomfortable with that fact, over 3,000 meters, two miles, it's going to start to tire you out. Your arms are going to get tired because you're fighting for balance around the turns every time. Whereas sometimes you can come in in a half mile or a mile if you're not used to running the boards well and muscle your way around. But in the longer distance races, you better have the feel, the balance of the track, the angle on the turns, and get into a comfortable rhythm. There you see Wes Ashford leading behind him, Brian Abshire and Doug Padilla biding their time. Right now, the important thing for the athletes to be thinking about is getting relaxed. Back in the Los Angeles Sports Arena, you're watching the men's 3,000 meters live here at the Sunkist Invitational. Bob Barsha, Marty LaCorey with you. Our leader since the outset has been Wes Ashford, followed by Brian Abshire and Doug Padilla. 1,000 meters past a 237 works out to about 751, a bit off the kind of pace we expected. 415.9 at the first mile, Marty. Well, this is exactly what Doug Padilla and perhaps a few other guys would like. 
you know, 22 laps is a long way to run indoors, and nothing you do in practice prepares you for the mental drudgery of trying to stay sharp through, as you mentioned, all these turns, all this jockeying, and the first race of the year to have the pace be a little bit slow so that mentally you don't have to dig real deep. That's just what a guy like Doug Padilla wants because he only wants to run hard for the last two laps of this race. He'd like it to be slow. Absher, on occasion, has a kick where he can stay with a guy like Padilla, but he knows if he really wants to win the race, he's got to take it out with five laps to go. They've got six laps to go right now, so Absher's moved himself into a position where he's leading. He's not picking up the pace drastically yet, but in the next couple of laps, he's going to have to start winding it up and hope to lose Padilla. 5.16.7 at 2,000 meters. So they went from a 2.37 pace down to a two, sub 2.30 pace for the second 1,000 meters. The pace definitely picking up. Passing Brian Grosso now, the young freshman at the University of Arizona. It is all Brian Abshar and Doug Padilla, teammates with the Nike Athletics West squad. And of course, teammates on the last Olympic teams, just off behind them, Matt Justo, the 1988 NCAA champ in 5,000 meters, who's been running very well, both on the longer distances on the road, has started to move up as well as Mark Yunkerman. But I think uh, the race is really over for first place. These two guys are not gonna come back and let them get a chance at their heels. So Absher, Seeming to uh, try and push the pace, but his arms appear to be getting tired. His shoulders are starting to roll a little bit more. And Doug Padilla is just staring at his back mentally, saying to himself, relax, relax the arms, relax the neck. Wait for the moment to spring, whereas Absher's got to be thinking, is he back there? Am I pulling away? Just two different things. They're only a yard apart, but the difference between being in first and in second is a world of difference. Two laps remain in the men's 3,000 meters, and we've watched as Brian Abshire keeps tugging at his jersey, looking over his shoulder, as Marty said, wondering where his teammate is. There's another tug on the left sleeve. Here comes Padilla. And he's got to make this a big move because Abshire has good speed. Well, Padilla hasn't really tried to put it away yet. To me, that means he's not too confident in his kick. Here he goes now. They can't ease off at all, but Padilla's getting a real good run from Brian Absher, who did most of the work, and Absher's gonna have a little bit of a shot at him coming off the turn. And Padilla closes strongly, and he will win the men's 3,000, unofficially 747-49. Progressively faster segments of 1,000 meters. Doug Padilla looking remarkably fresh, gets a big handshake from his teammate. Well, they really picked it up over the last five laps once Brian Absher got into the lead. They were running 750 pace, but they ended up with a 749 or so. So they really picked it up. But Padilla has to realize that that race was a lot closer than maybe it would have been two or three years ago when his kick was a lot more potent. And that is a new meet record for Doug Padilla, 747.2. Here is the move. Watch as Padilla lengthens his stride, opens his arms, and just runs right around Abshire. Well, he really passed at an unusual place. He passed going into the turn rather than coming out of the turn, hoping to maybe cause Abshire to break stride. He didn't. He gave him a lot of room. And uh, Abshire really was tired coming off of this last turn. He just, all his muscle function is gone. He's trying to throw himself at the tape, but it's too far off in the distance. A classic distance battle here in the LA Sports Arena. The last 400 meters for Doug Padilla, 57.2 seconds, and that's what clinched it for him. Here are your unofficial results. Padilla over Abshire with Matt Giusto closing well. 749-2 unofficially, and a new meet record for Doug Padilla. Stay with us. Well, he's run faster, but it was back in 1983 in San Diego on an 11-lap track. I don't think anybody has ever run as fast as, except you on an 11-lap track as you did here today. You're thrilled. Oh, I'm very pleased. That's not true. Some foreigners did. In fact, the American record is 41. I met Americans. But I'm still very, very pleased. Uh, to start off the season this early in the year, you don't know what's going to happen. To have it go this well and be able to respond, I am absolutely elated. 414 by the mile. What went through your mind? Just here trying to hang on. Brian's tough. Right after he holds the American record. No, he used to. Has a number two time. He's tough. He's capable. 
So I had to make sure, I, no matter what, I had to stay with him. I'm real pleased I was able to and even had a good kick at the end. You looked incredibly fresh. Really? It was an illusion. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I, maybe I really was better than I felt. Yeah, the beginning of the year is horrible nerve-wise. It really is hard, and so you don't know how you feel. So I'm real pleased that it went this well. Congratulations, great race. Thanks so much. Hi, Ned.